This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on May the 29th, 2017. In this edition, we're going to look at how to use your camera with Windows. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, folk, it's one o'clock and uh, time to start again. It's been a couple of weeks. And uh, just a reminder, our last session will be in two weeks, the middle of June. And uh, we will do Q&A. So get your questions ready <laughs> for the summer and the fall. Um, today, because it is approaching summer, summer's here, um, it is just about, everyone should be thinking about what they're going to do with one of these. Okay, your camera, whether it's a, um, a $50 potato, or three or four hundred dollars, or five or six thousand. For the purposes of computers and cameras, things are pretty much the same, okay? Uh, telephones are a little different, we'll get into telephones, uh, but these devices, how do you get the pictures off, okay? Once you've got pictures on here, what do I do with them? How do I, how do I get them to a place where I can use them, I can send them to my friends, I can, edit them, I can look at them and call them for the best. I take pictures and if I take 50 pictures a day and I get one or two in that day that I think are worth keeping, I thought I've had a good day with my camera. Okay, I thought I've had a good day. Um, some cameras, uh, most all cameras, uh, have a video function in them. So you can take 20 minutes worth of good quality video with decent quality sound. They have relatively good microphones in them if you're close enough. Some have uh, jacks to plug microphones in. So you can do a microphone like this one on that kind of camera. You can't do it on this one, but some of the more expensive ones you can. Um, and so it will take good quality video, which you can save to your computer, you can upload it to YouTube and send the link to your friends. All kinds of things can be done with one of these cameras. So let's start by looking at how do we get the photographs from here to here. The first thing we want to do is figure out how we want to do it. What are, there's two ways. There's the easiest way, which I can't show you. And <laughs> and the, the, the almost proper way to do it. Uh, there's an easy way, which is sort of the improper way. And then there's the proper way to do it, to let your computer handle all of the functions that your camera can give it. So we're gonna do it the sort of not easy way. We're gonna, we're gonna have the camera and the computer talk to one another to import the pictures. The first thing we're gonna do is plug the camera in with its USB cable. Uh, most cameras have a specialty cable that comes with it. They have um, a micro jack, which is what you would find for a telephone, or a mini jack, USB which is what this one is, um, but they all fit into your, into your laptop or your, or your desktop, and you find a spare USB port and plug it in. Now, in this case, it wants to, um, because I plugged this in, it wants to import the pictures right away into the computer. It will put them in pictures. If it finds videos, it will put them in videos. 
uh, the, cam the, the computer is talking to the camera uh, to say, where's your stuff? Let's have a look. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm not going to say never for this device, but I'm going to say cancel. And then what I can do is I can go and have a look at the camera on the computer. If that little box popped up as soon as you plugged the camera in, you know that the computer is talking to the camera and it's talking to its file system. Ooh, good thing. It's talking to its file system. So here is the camera, Canon PowerShot SX30IS. That's this camera. And if I click on it to open it, there's, there's the drive inside the camera. In this case, the drive is, is a, uh, a flash card, but it's uh, 30 gigs of flash memory in this camera. If I open that up, it will give me, it will start, I can start punching through the file system. For most cameras, for just about all cameras, DCIM is the file folder where the resources are going to be put by the camera. Okay, so if we click on that, we can see that it has, file folders have been created to show us what day pictures were taken. Now, these run numbers are being generated randomly by the camera. I can set it up if I want to fiddle with it all day to have these file folders by date. I can tell the camera, when you make something, make it by date instead of just a random number like this. Uh, it's a lot easier sometimes to, to um, keep track of what you've put on a camera if you're taking 50 or 60 pictures a day and then you can't get to it for a couple of weeks. Uh, you're going to have a bit of a problem. So let's start by opening up one of these and see what it shows us. Oh, it shows us all bunches of pictures. Uh, JPEGs, for the most part, 5 megabytes per picture, 4.8, uh, 4 but mostly 5 megas, megabytes, depending on whether I use the flash or not. Um, under view, I'm going to ask this to show me um, I think you want a large icon. Mm, I wish it would show me a preview, but it's not. There. A <laughs> oh, young fellow. It just shows me a big icon. Down in the corner. Down in the corner. Right Yeah, down there. There you go. Oops. Next one. <laughs> oh, I think I know. I don't think your camera actually makes thumbnails. No, the camera doesn't make thumbnails. I have to import them to get the thumbnails. Aha! Uh -huh. So, what it's given me is it's given me... Uh, it's named the picture an IMG image 0311 and given it a file extension, JPEG. Super big. In this camera, and a lot of more than $400 cameras, you have an option of getting the file as a JPEG or as what's called a DNG or a PNG. And what those files are is the complete picture. This picture is 5 megabytes. But it's been crushed down in a JPEG 11 times. So it's not giving you all of the information that's in the picture. If you want to, to manipulate this picture um, in Photoshop or something like that, 
what you want is you want all of the information you can get so you can decide what picture doesn't need and what it does need. If that picture is too dark and it needs to be lightened up, you can manipulate that large file size to give you a picture that's not too dark. Or if it's too light, that means or it appears to be blown out with whiteness. That may not be the case. You might be able to, if it's showing you that the complete file size of the picture, 11 times, so it's going to be 55 megs, that detail will be in that picture somewhere. And you can manipulate it with Photoshop to get that detail out. You don't have to put up with the fact, well, it's blown out, throw it away. If you can get it off as, uh, as a full-sized file picture, not a, a compressed JPEG, so much the better. Okay, You can get these things off. Um, I'm going to go to details here and it shows that this picture is uh, uh, 5,600 50, kilobytes. I'm going to try and open it. There we go. It's just a picture of some trees and such on a walk that I was taking. Um, what it is showing me is um, that in, in this instance um, at uh, 5,500 kilo, 5, kilobytes, uh, 5 megabytes, um, I may not be able to do a lot with this picture, but if I could get this off in that other file format, in the full file format, I could do a lot with it. I could do a lot with it. But hey, it's a nice picture anyway. It's a full picture. It's nice. When did you go for walks? That was last year. <laughs> when I wasn't sick and nearly dead. Um, so here's the thing. I can take all I can take this file folder I'm in right now, this uh, 0511. And I can just simply drag this over to my computer and it will make a copy from the camera to the computer. That's the way you want to do it. You want to make a copy from the camera to the computer. Once you've done that, check those files. Make sure they still work. Make sure they still open. JPEGs are delicate. They can be easily damaged just by file transfer. It can be easily damaged. It can miss a little bit of something in that, in, that, uh, in that file and it won't open. So before, after you've moved your pictures from the camera to the computer, before you make them go away on the camera, make sure they all work. Because once you use this camera to make them go away, they're gone. You can't get them back. Um, the other thing that you do not want to do, yes? How do I get it from your camera to the computer? I'm sorry? How do I get it from your camera to the computer? What well, you, you plug in. I plugged it in and looked at it and nothing happens. Um, that's how you, you have to navigate to the file system of the camera. We'll go back through that okay. after, I, after I tell you a few more things about this. Okay. This looks for all the world, like uh, files that are on your computer already, okay? And when you want to get rid of files, what do you do? You delete them. What does helpful Windows do if you delete a file? It does not delete the file. It just deletes the header that says the file is on this flash card somewhere. I've just deleted the header so that the computer can't see it. It's still there. The computer can't see it. If you fill up your flash card, your 16 gig flash card with pictures, 
and delete them all with the computer and then you go and check the flash card it'll tell you it's still full okay then you have to format the card to get everything off of it we'll get into that as a matter of fact um, let's get into formatting cards and stuff next week in question time okay yeah you format the card in the camera yeah yeah once you've done that all your pictures are gone and you're starting over okay um, so here we go don't delete pictures from the camera with your computer it doesn't work well get them off of the camera onto the computer make sure they work then use the cameras menu to delete the pictures that delete that empties the card now the problem you've got Brenda is you probably did this procedure you deleted the pictures with the computer from the camera now the card is saying well I'm still full but when you go to look at the cameras um, menu for deleting stuff it says well there's nothing there you can't delete anything there's nothing here that's what's happened so now you have to format the cart to get it back but we'll get into that in a couple of weeks well actually if there's one way to do it if I remember correctly other than formatting you uh the, there will be a hidden file called crashes mm, not often no no it all depends on what the camera is going to allow you to do okay it's going to it's what the camera allows you to do it's it's all about the firmware and the camera um, so that's um, pictures inside the camera um, the other way to do this um, I'll just get this out of the way for a second the other way to do this is to Take the card, the flash card, out of your your uh, computer. Okay, take it out of the camera, I should say, and allow it to be installed. I don't think I have a flash drive in here, do I? I don't see one. No. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, do? Yeah, it's right here. Maybe it'll see it. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll see it. Maybe it won't. Also, be very careful with these uh, SD cards. Yeah. Ooh, them. hooray! Uh, it's hot. Pretty fragile. Yeah. So. Hooray, it's hot. So, it showed me, it just showed me with a message that I've taken the, the flash card out of the camera and put it into the computer. Most of your laptops have a slot to put a flash drive in from a camera. Uh, you can if you don't have if you have a desktop you can buy a doodad um, that you can plug into a USB port which will accommodate a flash card okay let's go and look at uh, the computer now that it's just got its flash card and there it is okay it's showing us digital storage drive E okay the the computer Windows 10 was very helpful in uh, looking directly at the flash card that's installed in the computer it just looks at it as another drive it doesn't see it as a camera it's just a drive that has data on it so um, ooh okay I know what this is. This uh, CHDK and other things in here that are that are, were hidden in the other when I had the uh, the flash drive in the camera, they were all hidden from me. This, all of this other stuff here, allows me to boot the camera into that special condition that I told you about, where it saves the pictures without compressing them. So instead of a five megabyte file is 55 megabytes 11 to 1 it allows me to do that 
but uh, all I'm interested in is DCIM. That is the camera's file holding format. And here are those pictures in uh, 0511. And if I click on them, um, let's try this one more time. Nope. Um, it didn't uh, it didn't convert them. I have to move them onto the computer first from that drive. But there are all the pictures that we looked at before. And so there's your second easy way to get pictures out of your camera and onto the computer. Again, don't delete the pictures with the computer off this drive. What it does is it makes a recycle bin on the drive. Called trashes, dot trashes. Well, dot trashes, or it will just say recycle bin if it's Windows. Yeah. It'll make a recycle bin and throw all the stuff in there and your flash card will not be empty. It can't be. It's only using the first line of the file, this file 0311, it's only using the first line and it deletes it so the computer can't see it, but it's still there. Okay, so don't delete pictures from your camera drive. Use the camera to do it. Um, so there we go. That's all about pictures from your cameras. The other thing that you should try and do all the time is uh, if you have a decent quality camera that you've paid a couple of hundred bucks for, um, go to Henry's or some other place like that that's quality and buy one of these, an extra, a battery and a charger. Oh. When you go to take pictures, put the full battery in your pocket. Okay? Oh. Because this one's going to go this one's going to go dark. After half an hour or so. Oh. Okay? And you want to take some more pictures? If you haven't got an extra battery, go home. <laughs> okay? Yeah. They were pretty good in selling me a new uh, flash drive or whatever you call it. Yeah. And it had gigabytes instead of megabytes. Yeah. Boy, boy, boy. Yeah. Was it's, yeah. Now you can buy terabytes. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well, who needs that? Um, you're only going to get confused. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. There's, uh, there's my camera. Um, I bought this camera when James's mother got married. And that was like six years, seven years ago? Yeah. yeah. Um, I bought it to, to take wedding pictures. It was the best I could afford at the time. But I'm going to tell you something. It's m cameras that are made today are not much better um, at making pictures inside them than this one is six years ago. When digital cameras first came out, okay, uh, you had 320 kilobytes per picture. Okay? It was a little tiny thumbnail thing. And you could expand it, but all he would see was little blocks in the picture. Uh, but it was a start. And every few months they would get better and better and better and better. Um, Six years ago, this camera was sort of state-of-the-art for Canon as what's called a bridge camera. And that, when they say bridge camera, what they're really saying is the bridge between a uh, cheap-ass $50 potato and $500 SLR, single lens reflex. One of these. At the time was 400 bucks. The SLR was five. 
this had more pixels per shot than the SLR. Okay? And when I put the software on this camera to expand its capabilities, it now has 10 times what the SLR of that era would give me. I upgraded this camera just simply with software. Um, so there you go. There's, there's cameras good, good, good. Now, if you have one of these, a smartphone, even if you've got a dumb phone that takes pictures, a flip phone that takes pictures, you've got to get the pictures off. Right? Um, James' grandfather um, bought a dumb phone just, just because he needed something for an emergency so he could call us if he got into a jackpot. He's 92 and still driving. I insist that he have a phone. So he got this $20 potato from, uh, from Carp, the old folks he deals with. And, uh, but it takes pictures. Now I tried until my eyes ached to find a way to get the pictures off his phone onto my computer. Every cable I tried, nothing worked. Every setting I tried inside the camera, nothing worked. The computer couldn't see it with a cable. What it did, what it could see though, was a transmission protocol called Bluetooth. You've heard of that, Bluetooth? Keyboards? Mice? Speakers? I can't tell you that good. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> um, Chairs. It is, uh, it's a protocol whereby the, tele the, the telephone can um, use radio signals to move data from the phone to the computer and vice versa from the computer to the phone. So if, if you have a really nice phone and you want to uh, put ringtones on it, you can, you can download ringtones to your computer and put them on the phone with Bluetooth. Um, I'm not going to do it. Where's your phone? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. James, James is going to is going to activate Bluetooth on this phone, and I'm going to activate Bluetooth on this computer. Oh, I thought I was going to do both. No, okay. no. You're, you're, I'm right, right now. Don't do nothing yet till I tell you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right now, this little icon down here in the uh, dashboard shows you the, that Bluetooth is turned on. I'm going to just for a second here turn it off. And um, is it so you download? No. No. So if your okay. phone can do Bluetooth, it will have a setting already on. Yeah. No, I'm talking about a computer. That, yeah, if your computer can do Bluetooth, and I believe yours can, oh. okay, it's a laptop. Yeah. Just about every laptop can do it unless they're really, really old. Pretty much, if, if it can connect to the wire, the wireless internet, it can do Bluetooth. Yeah. Um, so um, I've turned the Bluetooth off, and the Bluetooth uh, icon disappeared. So let's start from there. Let's start from there. Let's say you open up your computer and you, you're you looking for the little Bluetooth icon down here and you don't see it. Well, that doesn't mean it's not there. It just means it's not active. So if we go into settings by clicking on your Windows icon and then click on the little gear, it shows us Windows settings. This is Windows 10. It's not much different in Windows 7. And then if we go if we click on the devices, okay, the devices will show us um, that uh, that we have we can add printers and scanners. Uh, it'll tell us about our fax machines. Um, and it will do things like 
how Windows will handle a, uh, a printer and such. But what we're inter interested here is if, well, if I click on printers and scanners, it's going to show me um, the printers and scanners um, that's available to the computer. But I'm going to click on Bluetooth. And we can see right away the Bluetooth is turned off. Okay? That's why we don't see down in the corner the uh, Bluetooth icon. So if I turn it on, watch down there. Yes, it popped itself right in. There it is. It's ready to go. Now, um, Alcatel One Touch is not you, is it? No, that's your. Or it's, it's some phone. It's some somebody in here has got a phone with Bluetooth active on it. Well, I've got an Alcatel. There you go. It's trying to talk to your phone, Brenda. <laughs> and you have Bluetooth turned on. Oh, do I? Yes, you do. <laughs> you might want to turn I it said, on. I said thank you. Well, it's important to me first when I bought it. <laughs> well, how long does your uh, your phone stay charged? A day or three? About four. About four days, okay, then you're fine. I wouldn't worry about it. Some phones will make themselves go flat with Bluetooth turned on in a day. Because Bluetooth, like I said, is, is uh, it's a radio signal. So it requires power to make it go, okay? And every couple of minutes, that Bluetooth, if it's turned on, will cast around for anything around it within 50 feet. Is there anything out there I can talk to? Okay. And in this case, uh, my computer saw that Brenda's telephone is out there with uh, and wants to talk to me. Okay. I don't want to talk to you, Brenda. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk to you. But James, in the meantime, has turned on his phone, which is SMJ32. Okay. Samsung J32. Whatever. Okay. And underneath each entry here uh, for things that it can see, it says ready to pair. By the way, I'm already paired to because I got to delete mine, so. Um, well, we'll talk about that. Um, it says ready to pair. So if I click on this, now when we say pair, what we're talking about, talking is, about is that the device will talk to only what it is paired with at the time. Your smartphone can pair with your smart car or with your car to have hands-free use of your telephone. Don't be chattering away on your phone going down the highway. It will cost you a lot of money. A policeman will see you. But if you're gassing away to yourself, going up and down the highway with both hands on the wheel and looking out the window and just gassing away to yourself, that cop knows you're talking on your phone, but you're doing it properly. Either that or you're crazy. One of the two. <laughs> and in both cases, he don't want to talk to you. Okay? So, uh, I have now clicked on ready to pair and I say I want to talk only to James's phone, so I am going to pair this computer with James's phone. And it generated a password on his phone, and it generated a password on my computer. And if they're both the same, I can say I will talk to you now. Okay. So what it's saying is uh, SMJ3032 uh, is paired to this computer now. By the way, it's ignoring your phone because it's, it's paired now. <laughs> um, so now it's paired. Now, at this point, we are just about ready to get the pictures off James' telephone onto this computer. And the way we do that is we look at send or receive files via Bluetooth. So let's click on it. And it, said, it asks you, what do you want to do? Do you want to send a file to the Bluetooth machine or do you want to receive one 
from the Bluetooth machine. When I say Bluetooth machine, in this case I'm receiving from James to here. He can do the same thing on his. He can say, I want to receive. So once he's done that, I can send him a file to his phone. Okay, but we're just going to receive files for now. Okay, now James, send me that picture of Daisy. Yeah. Oh, Daisy? Now, whatever. Yeah. Now, the way James is doing that is he's, he's found the picture he wants to send, and he just simply share, clicked on share, and when he did share, because Bluetooth is active, he had the Bluetooth capability to share. And then you just pick what thing you want to pair. Yeah. And so it sent me that picture to here. Okay? Now it's saying it's in the documents folder. Okay, but James and I checked before. We can't see that picture in there until we say finish. Okay? You have to finish the Bluetooth transfer. And so now I'm going to open up the documents folder and did you send me a screenshot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is a screenshot of James, of James's phone. Okay. That, it's it's the screen. Got hit by, uh, yeah. Oh, we detected that you have viruses on Yeah. Phone. Um Anyway, this is a picture from James's phone to me. And this is somebody trying to scam him. I laugh my ass off. How do you know it's scammed? Because. Uh, because um, there is no reason in the world for any of this to have happened, and he knows that. Well. Um, to, for a better example, when I when I got that, I just went on the internet and went to a site that I trust wholeheartedly. And this is like, oh, by the way, your phone's been yeah, bare, uh, I have a virus on it. I'm like, so this is this is the second way to get pictures off of a camera, a camera phone that's Bluetooth capable, or I should say, the third way. Um, I would say to you, if, if uh, all phones were a little bit different, and your flip phone is going to be different than your smartphone and my smartphone, um, YouTube will have a video to show you how to do it. Transfer pictures. Android uh, phone to Windows 10. Okay, and I've done that already. Alright. Uh, send, send something else? Yeah. Alright, I've done that already. Uh, and so it's, um, I have found, alright, here comes stuff coming in again. Um, I have found instruction. Uh, instructions on how to do this. Um, it's here's uh, what I showed you. You go to the settings and click on devices, and then once you've done that, um, you you find your device and all of that. It's all in a video somewhere to show you how to do it. Or you can use our video here on how to, because I think I've been pretty thorough on what to do with Bluetooth. But your phone may have something different uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the menu settings, okay? But for the most part, Bluetooth is always under network settings. So it's under network settings. It's, it's, it's no, no, it's under network settings on your phone. Bluetooth will be there. It will either be turned on or turned off. Now, now when, when you're done with it, do you turn it back off? I do on my phone because it takes, um, um, it, because it takes 
resources um, and my phone goes flat in a day. It takes resources from your battery. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I turn it off. I, mine is easy to turn on. Yeah, but even on the windows, you go down to your little uh, stupid jerky in the corner and get your notes. And you actually, ask, uh, yeah. And, yeah. And it'll be there, and you can just click there and it'll turn on. Yeah. That's pretty much how I do it on my phone. I charge that on the line, and the black is just starting. Oh, there it is. This one? Yep. Okay. And there's uh, there's the picture James took of his puppy dog That's on his phone. <laughs> what do you look at the camera? Uh, for 18 hours a day, you look at the dog and think it's dead. Um, <laughs> the only times it seems to move is when you feed it. Um, so there you go. There's um, there's Bluetooth telephone. There's Moving pictures over. Um, remove device. You did that already? Okay. All right. Um, now, with, with the phones, you can also do it the the camera way. With some phones, my phone, you can. Um, typically, smartphones, you'll be able to just plug it in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, iPhones, real easy. Plug it in. Yeah. The computer sees it in iTunes, and you can do whatever you like. Take your movies off, put movies on, uh, music, pictures, all the rest of it. Move it all back and forth. Not a problem. In, a, in the cases of Android phones, sometimes it's a little more difficult. Sometimes the Windows uh, operating system can see an Android phone, and sometimes it can't. Well, my phone's are great. Like I said, uh, you you know, I looked at uh, James's grandfather's phone until my eyes ached, and there was no way to move to move resources off of it with a cable. Is there the a way of moving the game over? Um, if you own the game and then move it over, not play it over. Sort of. Uh, boy, that's a tough one. You know, now you're ta you're talking about. Um, Let's say you bought a game and yeah. you own it. Now, if I want to put it over to the... Now you're talking about digital rights management. Oh, oh. oh okay. Well, uh, uh, uh. Sure yeah. an and, <laughs> and Apple is very anal yeah. about their yeah. digital rights management. Well, they're anal about everything except for... Music. So it, it may only allow you one copy of the game. And it knows when you've moved it to another device. Oh, okay. okay. But if you have two Apple... Yeah, okay. No, no, because uh, because you've only purchased one copy of the game. Oh, well, so that's it. Then. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes there's there's a way to hack it. Sometimes not. If the best the the best way is to make an account with Apple. Yeah. And then you can have it on anything that you have that account for Apple for. Yeah. In other words, they uh, they allow you backups. If you have an iTunes account, that is your new Apple account. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People also do I keep saying, do I want to update? I joined Apple a long, long time ago. I didn't know what it was. The tunes. Yeah. If if you have your lifetime membership. Yeah. If you know what your Apple ID is and your password has not changed, you can log into it today. And get Apple stuff. As a matter of fact, you can get back all of the stuff that you thought you lost if it's sitting on iTunes. How would I for get make this a camera? Let's see. How to make this thing into a camera? Yes. What do I have to do? Do I have to buy chips or? No, I. I Unless it has a camera on it, you have to trade it in. Yeah, you told me. <laughs> okay. All right, so have you got that? Just go to the camera app, James. It should turn on. Yes, there isn't one. It doesn't matter because I have a nice camera, but I just wondered if. 
Sometimes it's the button. Like in Twitter, has a camera. I am not particularly sure, Brenda. Yeah, it's got a camera because yeah, there you that's go. Yeah. You said it. Okay, but uh, here's what to do. Um, Google Alcatel One Touch. Turn on camera. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. There should be an instruction there. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, that's a cheap one like this. Isn't it? I can't see any of that. Yeah. Well, this doesn't have. Oh yeah, on the side. It has a button on the side. Yeah. All that little mark. Yeah. That button. Hold that. Oh, that will take a picture. Yeah, make sure when you're taking pictures with, especially with your foot close, it's down there. Don't, uh, yeah. don't, don't take cameras camera. like pictures like this. <laughs> yeah. You'll yeah, get it yeah, I see that. This is why I hold my hand too. Speaking of alcohol, I'm going to have some calls on my phone about. Which is in my computer. Um, yeah. Um, one of the it, this morning identified himself. Here, uh, that is calling from Well, that that here again. That uh, that they're they're just they're just changing the parameters of the scam. That's all. Used to be Windows. You you can be very polite to these people and just simply say, "You have lied to me. Goodbye." I go click in their face. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can yeah. do it. It's all scam. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got I did. on my phone to save it. I scammed them back. Oh, 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 very polite sounding and officious. I'm from yeah. the CRA. Oh, we yeah. have a problem with your tax return. Oh, no, 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 you don't. Talk to my accountant, please. All right, so there we go. Uh, cameras for the summer. Um, in the next couple of weeks, dig them out, dust them off, uh, power them up, make sure they work. If you have questions, we will look at them. I have not in because I get a new iPhone, so I have to come here. And well, yeah. no, this is the problem. Um, I do not have an iPhone, and I don't well, know very know much about they, them. I know a decent bunch. Yeah, because my iPod's essentially an iPhone, but yeah, calling yeah. But uh, um, if you want to learn about your iPhone and and its capabilities, um, YouTube is the place to go. Okay. I'll All right. Um, how to use iPhone camera and give it the name of the iPhone, mm -hmm. iPhone Seven, or whatever. How to use iPhone Seven camera. Yeah. Um, and it will give you videos and instructions and YouTube. That's the way to go. Yeah, and and as as the video is playing, remember that you can stop it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And you can go back, or you can stop it, and you can do exactly what they said, and see if that works. If that works, you continue on to the next thing, and then stop it and do what they said. Okay, that's how to learn. That's how to learn here. Uh, me standing up here uh, telling you these things is your first step in getting into YouTube because that's where the real lessons are. Is in YouTube. Yeah. Follow us at. Yeah. Yeah. When you send your video, I recycle it. So I've got them all, and I thought, oh, that was the one about. Yeah. 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 I yeah. If, I like the video, if I like the video thing that I've seen on YouTube, want to reuse it? I just bookmark yeah. it. Well, remember that I also I send you a second link with every uh, with every yes. video, and that second link is all of our videos.
Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's yeah. our account, yeah. and all of our videos are in there. Yeah. 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 Exactly so. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other any other questions about cameras and? No, no about you, you, you piqued my interest when you went into settings to turn off the blue tube and that. <coughs> I'm getting an icon in my taskbar, this silly radian settings. Okay. And I keep hiding it, but it comes back every day. And I can I turn that off? Yes, settings? you can. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. If you right click on it. Yes. Um, it just says hide or it says go into it or whatever. Uh, and you open it up. Okay. There, there should now. Radeon is your video card, yeah. and it's and it's going to load. Uh, the video card uh, application is going to load no matter what. Oh. But um, there may be an entry there for um, load when Windows loads. Oh. You want to uncheck that. Okay. Uh, there may be a uh, um, an entry for what James. Uh, um, there's three or four different ways that video cards uh, load their drivers so you can change them. Um, here's, yeah, technically it's best not to, but here's, here's the NVIDIA settings in, in uh, the, the NVIDIA control panel. And uh, we'll just open that up for a second and, and we'll see it. Uh, here we go. Um, what you're looking you're looking for uh, may be under desktop, or it may be under um, under one of these um, manage manage your settings or something like that. Um, this is Nvidia. It's not Radeon. Radeon is different. Is a different thing. Radeon yeah. is owned by. Yeah. Uh, but. It's, it's not taking uh, resources from the computer by opening up because no matter whether you can see it or not, it's going to open. It has to. Okay. That's how the screen is controlled. But I managed to get it on my face for a long time and all of a sudden, bang. It's yeah, it, it probably took an update and was trying to be helpful. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's coming to an update. Yeah. That's what I yeah. how I got it again. Yep, that's how you got it again. So, okay, so I'll just figure out how to turn it off. Okay, any other questions about um, cameras? Now, uh, James uh, wanted to get into one thing, but I, I don't think we really need to. Um, when you open a picture uh, from either your camera or what's on the computer, uh, if you don't have any picture editing software, you do. Uh, the photo editor in Windows 10 is okay. It'll take care of red eye, it'll resize your pictures, you can lighten them, darken them, you can print them. I always make a copy though before I touch Yes, touchy, exactly. Copy. Yeah. And then I play with all this. Play with the size. copy. If you mess it up, yeah. just delete the copy and start again. Yeah. Okay? Or to, when you get it to a place where you like it, uh, save the copy save as. The copy. Yeah. Uh, don't save it as a copy, save it as a new item. It gives it a number two yeah. or something. The yeah. same name, but number two it has after yeah. it. And yeah. That's what I use if I send it by email or, yeah. or something like that. It's the one I resized and fixed. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, if you want to get into editing pictures, editing photographs, you can go to a place called lynda.com for 15 days and learn how to do it. Linda? Yeah, lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A. -L um, and learn how to do it there, 15 days or... They'll teach you anything yeah. and every, everything. Yeah, how but, to, yeah, but uh, after 15 days you have to pay. Yeah. Um, the other thing you can do is you can download um, a a program called GIMP, G-I-M-P. Uh, GIMP is, uh, is a program for uh, manipulating and editing pictures. 
it's as good as and in some cases better than Photoshop. There's also oh, said, and it's free. Uh, yep. Can you learn it fast? Because I couldn't. No, it. you can't learn it fast. Yeah. <laughs> you have to learn by doing. Okay. If you know something about Photoshop. No, I know only. Yeah. If you, yeah. Uh, well, Print Shop Pro may uh, a lot of the stuff that's in Print Shop Pro will be available in GIMP. It just, it will be there under a different name. Under a different name. Um, a different icon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, how you would uh, um, make a frame would in in uh, Photoshop yeah. uh, would be under a different name, mm -hmm. closely related. But You've got to play with. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you got to play with. I'll it. Try. Um, okay. Uh, so I don't think we'll. We'll. I'll just tell you that GIMP is available. Uh, you can use it. Um, there are tutorials uh, on YouTube on how to use GIMP. Um, and it's one of the better ones out there for free. Um, beyond that, anything else, James? Um, I think we're done. Yeah, I think we're done. Also, judging from the design. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for today. We will gather again in two weeks for our last uh, program of the year. And that will be um, a question and answer. So if you have questions, uh, we will have answers. If, it's, uh, <laughs> if it seems to be a, a really um, um, uh, a question uh, that would be difficult, give me a little advanced warning by um, sending me an email with your question um, and that way I can do a little further uh, um, looking into your question to make sure I get it answered thoroughly and correctly. Okay? So there we go. Two weeks time. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.